Hello everybody. My name is Prentice Boxdale and I hope that you have you enjoying this YouTube channel. Will you please hit the subscribe and like button? And y'all are gonna have a hallelujah good time for we got many more to come. And let's have a good time together. Everybody just come on in and enjoy yourself. Come on! What are you I waiting for? Come on! I wanna roll. Yes, sir. Yes, sir.
return to our shelter in the town of Storm, 118. Pray. 
you know, I can see you, y'all coming up here. And, 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 then, and, then, and then I was like, man. So I was talking to a cousin of mine in Chicago, you know, my first cousin, and, 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 you know, and she was talking about, hey, you know, something ain't right. She said, y'all, she lived here too, but she's back in Chicago. Something is not right. Y'all and y'all and be y'all and be the bingos, okay. and, 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 and the team that we don't like is Green Bay. We're Chicago. We don't like Green Bay because we haven't beaten them really in two straight years since '85. Okay. That was our Super Bowl year. We haven't beat Green Bay like that. And so we were looking, we were looking, we were looking. She, this is what she said to me. She said, "Something ain't right here, cuz." I said. I probably go to bed. It's about exerting. <laughs> she said, but you need to know something ain't right. I was watching the game, Floyd, and here's what I said. I'm not a prophet, so don't, don't, I don't want y'all stoning me just yet. I'm not a prophet, but I said, you know what? Two things are not happening in Green Bay. Normally during this time, there's a blizzard. Right. The, the field is called frozen tundra. It was like it's so much stuff going on. Y'all like, what that got to do with your lesson? <laughs> 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 I haven't had, I don't know y'all, so I haven't had time to just dispose of y'all. I don't see y'all much. We're on Zoom. And, and, and by the way, I want to I confess something, my sins right now. Number one, if, since y'all about to stone me, I'm going to confess my sins. I'm on, I'm, on, I'm on the thing every Monday night. My issue is that I have a council issue that I'm listening, I'm, look, I'm on a council so they can see me, the people who hire me. Can see me. So Monday nights I'm on. Yeah, yeah. But there was something I have to deal with with city council stuff. So if you don't see me or hear my voice, and, and somebody did, my brother said, anybody else on? I'm, I can't say nothing. <laughs> right. But let me get back to my story about Green Bay. So I said, unless there's something frozen on this field, unless there's a snowstorm in January, something's going on with this game. That's going to be like the Titans game. She said, oh, no, Green Bay is going to kill them. I was about to go to sleep, and I was watching the game. And guess what? It was 10 to 10. Fourth quarter. Nobody could do nothing. And all of a sudden, it got down to the edge. I was about to fall asleep, and I looked over it, and it was about 37 seconds left. And it was about to kick the ball. They let it go all the way down to five seconds, four seconds. What happened in the Titans game, the same thing. Yeah, I kicked it. Mm -hmm. A 41, 42 yard field goal. Yep. This is the first time this ever happened. See, we're living in that, we're living in difficult times, strange times, serious times. But things that are not going to be the same. Right. It's like life is, is seen to be flowing all out of proportion and all out of control. You know? yeah. And so, for the first time ever, I think in the NFL, two of the top teams on both sides, AFC and NFC, on the same day, fell. You watch today, something else will start happening. But I, I, want, I, want, I want to kind of slow us down just a little bit. And I want, I want to kind of talk a little bit about value. Okay. And I'm going to talk about value in a way well, I'm going to talk about the value of a soul. Yes. When I was, uh, and, and, and I hope y'all don't mind me using a word that, that you may not hear much, but when I was matriculating, All right. since I got that written down, but see, I, I said, but that, might, that might sound like I've been to school. When I was matriculating in Oklahoma, I was, I, was, I was dealing with some counseling things. I didn't know what to do. I couldn't play football. I had gone to Southwestern. I told my grandfather, I would give you two years, but I would still try to play football because my goal was to play in the NFL. I was pretty good. All right, all right. Floyd, you were on the defense or offense? <laughs> were you offense or defense? You were both. I was, I was a defensive guru. I, I was like a water boy. When I grew up where I grew up, you said something about, can I say this up here? You said something about my mama. I was waiting on somebody on the field to say something crazy like that because I could run through the line. I, I would take my body. I would be I, I would be kamikaze. I would be I would, I would run through you, run through a line, jump over the center. I would do so much stuff. I didn't even know they didn't even know where to line me. I was the middle linebacker. I was a nose tackle. We were in a two-five set. I don't even know what that is anymore. The point.
point is, is that I did everything necessary because I felt like whatever the value was, yeah. whatever it was that was valuable to deal with success and on the football field, I would go for it. Can you imagine a God who created a world and out of his greatest love, his greatest desire, he created man. I don't know what you feel and how you feel and what you think and, and where the recesses of your mind go, who taught you or whatever it might be, what you've been exposed to. But to understand value yes, sir. is to understand where we really came from. All right. And out of the depth of God's greatest love, God created you and I. The Bible says that we were created in his image. In the image of God, he created us. Male and female. God breathed heaven's breath into our bodies and we became a living soul. Yes, sir. I, I studied Calvinistic doctrine. I studied Darwin's theory of relativity. All that stuff I studied. I am not a monkey. Right. I wasn't derived from an ape. Right. I didn't come from a single cell amoeba. Right. I didn't come from a dinosaur. Right. I came from God. Yeah. And since I came from God, God is the ultimate of value. Nothing exists without God. Amen. And so when I prepared this lesson, and, and lessons I prepared, because I think one of the greatest privileges that we have is that we were made in the image of God, and like God, we have the ability to create life. Yes. We have the ability to, to, to unfold reasoning and create whole new genres and whole new worlds. We have the ability yes. to stop things from occurring. We have the ability to bring things in as God, and yet we have the same ability to love. Amen. And we have, because of sin, that ability to hate. Mm -hmm. But deep down inside of who we are, All right. God is looking for the value. Amen. The value of the soul. Yes. And for the next few minutes, I want to go on a journey with you and, and show you something that I started last time. I just want to, I just want to touch it. And brother, you got a mic on you? You got a mic somewhere on you? So you can help me with this. And, I, and the theme here is the harvest is plentiful right. and the laborers are few. Amen? Right. Right. So be a soul seeker. I didn't know that until now. In 2022. Amen. Did you, did you, did you create that? Did you Floyd go and say that? Be, be a laborer. That rhymes. I didn't know that rhymes. I was thinking deep, deeply. But that's a nice little thought. All right, now, 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 let's, like, let's go on a journey. Everybody say value. value. When you think of value, you think of something that is ultimate. It's way up here. There's nothing more important. Right, right. There's nothing more significant. There's nothing more certain right. than value. Um, I stopped after a while wearing whole suits. Because the suits, the, the place I used to go when I got here is no longer here. They had some. My suits, instead of this one, I, I, I had this one retailer. And to me, it feels too short. I don't know how y'all feel. So if I start pulling on myself, I, you know, I ain't vain. I am, but I, I'm not trying to get y'all. But this, this is how they make the suits now. So I, I thought to them, make it, the suit was a long, and he cut it. Yeah. And I'm like, Things have changed. There's a, there's a place in Chicago called Harold Pinners. There's a place in Denver called Harold Pinners. There was a place in Kansas City called Harold Pinners. Harold Pinners kind of had franchises of, of nice suits, and they were pretty expensive up there. And I love them because I'm a different kind of figure guy. <laughs> Is that all right with y'all? And so, so as I as I think about value, I'm just adding. When I talk, I, I'm talking about what I'm dealing with. 
value. And so when I go to do something, I don't play no matter what it is. And my mama taught me that. If you're going to be whatever you are or whoever you're going to be, be the best at it. So if you got to come behind me, I'm not playing. I don't play. Even when I'm up here, my antics are one because I'm free. I'm, I'm, I'm out there. Yeah. Okay, I, I'm, I'm still ready for y'all to start throwing something, but since y'all ain't started, let me get to the point. Value. All right. Value. Harold Pinners had a partner. He gave his partner part of his, his, you know, the collection and all. And so in this part of the country, Harold Pinners was man of fashion. Y'all ever seen that? Oh, the Hickory Hollow Mall, when I moved out here 24 years ago, had, had the same store. I said, who, who, who owns this? He said, yeah, you wouldn't know nothing about it. This guy's from Chicago. He had, he had a franchise in Denver. He had, I said, hey, I live in Chicago. I got married and moved to Denver. Yeah. I got 10 folks in Kansas City. He said, it was Harold Pennings. So men of fashion, they're no longer around. So now I have to go to S and K, K and G, C and C. It's out of a music factory. Value. Everything seems to be on the physical level, decreasing in value. So as we talked about last time, here's a man that's being brought to Jesus. They tear off the roof. I ain't going back through that whole thing. When they tear off the roof, they lower the man down to Jesus. As he's in front of Jesus, Jesus looks up, sees the hole in the plaster falling through from this house. Right. And he, he and this caught Jesus' attention about value. Because whatever it was about these four men and their friend, there was a lot of value in that relationship. Because they carried them to Jesus. They tore up a person's house. They climbed the wall. They banged them upside. But they had a value in their relationship with him that the only thing they believed that was, was going to be ultimate with this man's healing Right. and getting him in front of Jesus. <laughs> and so in verse 5, listen to this, listen to the value. And, and what's on the floor is the topic, the value of our soul. All right. Say that with me, the value, value. of our soul. Value. All right, I like that. Let's make it personal, the value of my soul. Right. Turn to your neighbor and say, the value of your soul. Value. Turn to somebody you don't know. Look over the audience. Y'all spread out, look over the audience. Say, the value of their soul. So the whole point today is the value of the soul. Yes. Listen, listen, then, then listen to the text. Listen to the text. Verse 5 says what? Brother Jesus saw their faith. When Jesus saw their faith. Right. Listen, listen. What's on the floor? What's on the floor? The harvest is plentiful and the workers are few. Yes, sir. So be a soul seeker in 2022. You're going to get me hurt up here, but I didn't know that rhyme. The value of my soul. The value of your soul. Yes, sir. And the value of their soul. <clears throat> That's what these gentlemen had in mind. They didn't really understand, but they knew this man needed healing. Amen. 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 All right. I got I got I got a couple more things and I'm almost done. I'm, I'm serious. I'm almost done. Floyd gave me a, a edict this morning. <laughs> and I'm gonna follow that edict. If not, then y'all all in trouble. The Floyd gonna run me out. I'm gonna say, no, I'm finished. I'm, I'm gonna do what I can. In verse five, listen to verse five again. Listen to it again. When Jesus saw their faith, slow down, slow down, slow down. This is the slowest point in my sermon. When Jesus saw their faith, right, man, the four friends, and there must have been some value because they're lowering a man down in somebody's house they don't know. Amen. They were tenaciously created. Crazy like, like, like the person you see standing up here. See, the reason why I do what I do, I've seen a whole lot of crazy stuff. I've been involved in some crazy stuff. Yeah. I've been a culprit too. Yeah. All right. So I don't get up here with judgment trying to, trying to figure out if I'm better than you right. as I talk to you. Right. I'm trying to relate something that God is dealing with both of us in value. Yes, sir. I know that's correct English. I started out with the tribulation, but I see. But I better do something else. And so he saw their faith. Listen to what he did. He Listen. said unto the sick of the palsy. He said to the sick of the palsy, son, son, stop, 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 stop. He said to the sick of the palsy, son. If you know anything, if you go back to the Jewish history, and you know anything about the word son, 
If you go to New York, like I went to several times, and my cousins up in Boston and Mattapan and Roxbury, you know, all the way up there, they talk like that. From New York all the way up. I went, I went several years ago, and I was in a conference up there, and, and this guy, he was, well, we were in church, we were in a, in a congregation there in Boston, and boy, I was preaching kind of when I was really in the flow, okay. preaching and jumping and doing all the stuff I normally do, because I'm, I'm excitable about being, teaching the word. This guy was in the middle, he was not said amen, he was like, song, song. I was like, whoo. The idea was value. Two things I want to leave with you with the value of the soul that right. God is dealing with with you, that God wants you to deal with with other people. All right. And the two things on the floor, position, uh, and condition. All right. All right. All right. Let that marinate for a minute. Okay. Position and condition. Yes, sir. Watch out. Watch, watch this now. Now, don't, I told y'all, I put on some old shoes and I let my feet okay. got smaller. I, I, I'm, a, I'm in a 13. Yes, you know. Triple E and a king. My feet are sliding. I didn't put on thick socks today. Okay. See, I do that so I can keep my point. Y'all like this ain't crazy. I am. <laughs> listen, listen to this. Two things. What are, what are, what's on the floor? Value of yes. the soul. That's right. What's on the floor? Value of my soul. Right. What's on the floor? Value of your soul. Yes. And, and I'm, when I say you, I'm talking about everybody in this building who are claiming some kind of relationship with the Lord. Right. And then the value of their soul. That means people who don't have a relationship or don't even claim to know God. Right. So that's what's on the floor. Two things. And then, and then as I deal with this, what, what was your first name again? Joshua. As I deal with this, Joshua, we're talking about position. Position and condition. All right. Okay. The problem with the way we view people, okay. we view them by their condition. Okay. What's hard for us to, to relate to this in the world we're living in is condition. All right. There's a difference then between environment okay. and culture. Okay. Wow, I, I just left, I just, the air just let out. Some, I felt something in here when I said it. You lost me, bro. Let me, let me tell you something. We think if we take a person out of environment, it changes their condition. Okay. I live, I worked for the last 36 years in penal systems, corrections, court, juvenile system, and I will tell you that is not the case. Yeah. And so the issue is if you change the condition or the the environment, right. the person should be thankful and be better. Matter of fact, that's happening with all of our juvenile systems all over the world, especially in this state. I go to all of them. They have all this stuff conditional. I never had as a kid in my own home, and they're locked up. And they bring me in here to talk to them, and now I'm talking not only to kids, but more to staff, because the staff are messed up. Why are these kids not acting right? We give them more stuff. Because this same issue yes. is presented here in the text. Mm -hmm. People are more concerned with condition than they are position. All right, all right. I'm getting ready to do something. As I close, mm -hmm. as I close, listen, listen. When Jesus saw him, Jesus was not a paramedic that God comes to the scene and has to deal with condition. Because everybody that has referred, even the Bible, even the, the writer refers to this man not by his position, but by his condition. Yeah. Makes any sense to you all? Uh -huh. So before we can get here, yes, sir. before we can get here, we got to come in here. All right. All right. All right. Because I'm not here. I didn't get here because I made up in my mind, listen, listen, now this is going to be controversial as we look at these two, because I decided at the right time, I made up my mind, I wasn't that bad anyway. Yeah. I made up my mind, I did God a favor, and I made up my mind 
to be saved. You responded, but God already had it out there. And see, if, if that's how we feel, then our condition will always, we will always find something to try to cope with the condition, and we don't ever get to the position. All right, all right. All right then. If you understand this, nod your head. <laughs> if you don't, say, keep going, preacher, and you need some, I need some more. All right, let me give you some more. Let me give you some more. Let me give you another passage that's relatable to this, and I'm going to come back and close here. See, I'm at the closing. Two things on the floor. Okay. Position, condition. Yes. In Luke chapter 15, somebody prayed that I, matter of fact, you would have been praying that I remember everything I studied. That's, that's a bad, that's, that's messed up. Because there's so much stuff I got. Amen. I'm going back to my old book. So I'm like, I can't spend this much money. Here's my point. Here's my point. When Jesus comes in for the last time in the book of Luke, this story does not start in Luke 15. Okay. Matter of fact, y'all know about the rich man and Lazarus in Luke 16? Okay. That don't start in Luke 16. That starts in Luke 13. Okay. When Jesus starts coming in the temple, and for about three hours, well, I wish I had, I wish I had that kind of stuff with Jesus. For three hours, he's teaching in the temple. And he's talking about the kingdom of God. He's talking about the mindset of position. And it gets to Luke 15 in the writing of the Bible. But that's not it. So when he comes into the other part, the people that's following him, who originally could not even come into this section, of where they were worshiping or the teaching were following Jesus. And when he walks in there, Floyd, uh -huh. these folks are following him, and the people that normally, you know how this was created in history? It was created because of the synagogue. The yes. synagogue had seats, like we would call choirs. Yeah. It wasn't in the original temple, it was in the synagogue, and these men sat up here, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the scribes. They set up here. We've created, recreated. There was no pews in biblical history, in biblical thought. Right. There was no, there was no podium in biblical thought. The teacher sat down here, and everybody kneeled yeah. or stood. Yeah. Why is that important? Value. So we put a man up there, and we start throwing darts on him if he comes down here to live where we are. Yeah. If he's just as human as we are, we're still dealing with his, his condition. Okay. And so Jesus comes in and the sinners are following him. They follow him that the Pharisees start having a problem. He's eating with sinners. He's coming to your company with sinners. He loves sinners. Yeah. So Jesus stops. And he starts dealing with position and condition all at the same time. How does he do it, Brother Lemon? He talks about three conditions. Right. He talks about people who are lost. Right. And they are lost because, number one, they are ignorant. Right. right. Y'all, what, what, what's on the floor? Condition, position. All right. Value. They are lost because they are ignorant. Right. And they listen to this, and they're like, whoo. Jesus said, okay. If he wanted to be a hero, Jesus would say, but y'all got the position. Jesus didn't do that. Jesus said, then the other folk were lost because of negligence. All right. And in the negligence that they're lost on is not their own. It's the negligence of the people who's supposed to teach them. Yeah. Condition. We are living in a world, that's why I start, I start all this, and then I'm going to explain it. We live in a world just like this. If you're a parent, if you are if you're a guardian, right. this is speaking to you. We got to keep on. We we can't be relaxed. We can't we 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 can't be compromising. We you know I told my daughters if somebody ought to come after you, they ought to be coming up to an apple tree. 
Okay. Because you're that valuable. They got to climb. They got to climb. They got to climb. So that's what I did with their mom. All right. Amen. I'll do it again. All right. Value. Can I be transparent in here? Can I be transparent? I wasn't the one. Even though I knew what I knew, I was one of those slick guys. Some of her dad, you know, I love you to death. No, here's what I told her, and I still say this today. I love you to life. Because that's how value is. Because anybody who loves you to death will kill you. <laughs> What's on the floor? Value of a soul. What's on the floor? Position. Condition. The third position in, the, in, this, in this book that, that, that our, our uh, Brother C. read. Did you read that, Brother C? Okay. See, I, I, I told you I'll be 60, so I have to remember who I'm looking at. The third condition is defiance. Yeah. Look at the three conditions. And we find ourselves in either of these three. It means you just don't know. Okay. Negligence. Somebody did not do what they were supposed to do. All right. And third, you got all the information you need. You got all the situation. The environment is suitable. You just define it. I'm sorry. I'm looking in the mirror. So if y'all think I'm looking at y'all, that's okay. I'm asking every time I preach in the mirror, right? Yes, sir. I'm talking to the living every morning. Yes, sir. So what, what three we got? Ignorance, ne negligence, and defiance. I don't see that in the scripture. The first one is a sheep. They're ignorant. They done. Mm -hmm. That's just who they are. They got to have some. They they go astray in a minute. Water looks good. They don't know what's in the water. They go astray because they just don't know. Mm -hmm. And the law. Jesus talking about the lost soul. That's right. What's the second one on the floor? Negligence. Here's a woman. Here's a woman. Uh. Who's the youngest person in here? Who's the youngest person in here? Not the baby, not the baby. Somebody who can do some walking. Somebody can do some walking. Either, either one of you two, one of you three in the middle there. I'm going to see which one, see which one. I'm talking about value, so I'm, I'm getting ready to add value. Which one of y'all wants some value? Which one of y'all wants some value? What's your name, son? Cameron? Like indoor stadium, like Duke University, I've been to Duke University, Cameron Indoor Stadium. Cameron, I need you to do me a favor. I need you to go get that satchel up here. Okay? Okay. If using the boy up, Valley, Valley. I don't know Cameron, Cameron don't know me. We didn't plan this. Okay? Okay. Cameron? Does not help your position. <laughs> <laughs> What's this, Cameron? Twenty dollar bill. You sure? Hold it up. Hold it up. Show it everybody. I won't have. So turn around. Turn around. What, what's that, y'all? All right, now y'all got it wrong. This is the big head twenty. That's what my granddaughter called it. Cause I, I had a old twenty dollar bill. She said, "No, that's different." I said, "These are new." She said, "That's a big head twenty." So this is a big head twenty. All right, now is twenty dollar valuable? Yeah. Is it for real? Yeah. Is this valuable to you? Yeah. <laughs> still valuable? Yeah. You sure? Kevin, talk to me. Still valuable? Because they can hear you through the valley. Still valuable? Yeah.
Kevin gets to do all that. Kevin might not be I was somewhere and I, I actually had a hundred dollar bill. I don't, I don't care that much. And, and then I they had nothing else to pull out. I was doing the same issue, this illustration. And a young man about his age, how old are you, Cameron? Cameron. Cameron, how old are you, Cameron? 16. You were about Cameron's age about 12, 13 years ago. I was down in the country. And this, this, this young man was like, and I was not going to give him a hundred bucks, but he was like, I want you got your second. Guess what I did? I gave him a hundred bucks. As I, as, as I want you to marinate this, that's how we are. We're so involved with the conditional people. When salvation first is about the position that we put people in front of God and Christ. All right. That's why we have such a tough time with lost souls because we don't see ourselves in the same condition right. as the people who are lost because somebody changed our position. Yeah. When Jesus calls this boy son, he establishes a relationship with him that the boy couldn't establish with him himself. He changed the way the boy thought, this young man thought about who he was as it related to his relationship with Jesus. You think that ain't deep? The question on the floor for the Pharisees in chapter 2, and the Sadducees in chapter 2, and the same book in Luke 15, was who Jesus think he is? How dare you bring sinners up into a holy place, condition, environment. I'm trying, what I'm trying to do as I seek to understand the will of God and the kingdom of God is to seek culture. If you, I grew up in the projects. I don't care what I look like now. I was on 63rd and Damon, 49th and State. High rise, shooting all the time. L trains all night. Yeah. I grew up in that environment. If you knew what I've seen, if you knew what I've experienced, would you be sitting here listening to me? No. Years ago, I'm almost 60. I still, my brothers and I, still just, we shake our heads about what God allowed has done because people birth some things into our position. That's why when I see a young man about to go, he done shot somebody or he's been that's been claimed. I'm not, I'm not, I understand condition. But you can't take him out of what he's doing and put him in a better situation, conditional, and not deal with the position. Right. So we can come every Sunday and we can be conditional. This building does not make you a Christian. It, 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 it is a blessing and a tool given by God to help you in your position as you deal with your relationship with God and the value of your soul. So songs make a lot more sense to me now that I say it. I don't care what anybody say. I was with you. I, hope, I was there. I didn't know half the stuff. And I tell y'all, here's what Brother Little is. If you get to know me, you cannot threaten me with a worship. I don't care who's saying If he's singing about Jesus and God and helping me in my position, guess what? I'm going to be hitting a note. I don't know what it is because I still think Psalm said, make a joyful noise. God is not as concerned about you being praying in your singing. God is trying to get to the value of your soul. He didn't say that before he got, he didn't say that right. He needs to say something a little different. He needs to use tact. Great. That's good. That's nice. But if you leave here this Sunday morning and your position with the Lord is not settled, 
What's easier to say? Mark 2. Your sins are forgiven. Here's a two, here's a two on the floor. Position and condition. Your sins are forgiven and get up and walk. Hmm. Listen to this. That one was on the floor. What's easier? Because they were listening. They were in the corner. Like, y'all, they were in the corner. Murmuring. Who do you think he is? To forgive somebody's sin. Like, he got it. God, who you know, they, they didn't know who Jesus was. How you gonna proclaim sin free man? What was really on the floor of this man's healing? Jesus said he's deeper than that. It's his position. Because when he walks away from your walking, I'm gonna put that thing that bind him in the first place on his back so he'll always remember the difference between his position and his condition. All right. So what's easier to say? Your sins are forgiven? For years I've stopped. So I'm like, oh, your sins are forgiven. No, no. Condition, position. See, by their standard, if the man got up and walked, they were messed up anyway. She said, I'm going to mess you up some more because you all don't like sinners because of condition. Right. And you're in the same position, ain't you? Well, well. So it's not easy to say either way, your sins are forgiven. You will get up and walk with that. You may know that the Son of God has power to forgive sin. Get up, son. He already, see, he already established a relationship with him before he healed him. He established a position before he dealt with the condition. I said he established a position before he dealt with the condition. I say it again, he established a position before he dealt with the condition. Our issue is that we want, we see the condition, we don't want to establish the position. Because it's going to do something to help, to, see, to show us and the difficult it is to deal with something. Value. The last one was the two sons. Two sons. And we've been preaching this prodigal son. I'm not saying that ain't right. I'm saying we've been preaching the prodigal son, prodigal son, prodigal son. But the text says something about the condition and the position. It said a certain man had two sons. And the younger one came to him and said, Father, give me the goods that fall to me. Yeah. What was the oldest son standing right there? And in Jewish terms, they literally were telling, the only way you can get your inheritance, two ways, either the father has to decree it in a certain way, and he's not able, or he has to be dead. Yeah. So if the father gave to both of them, both of them were in the wrong. They were both defiant. They should have said, no, no, no. So, so literally, the father was saying to them, both of y'all wish me dead because I'm going to give you your inheritance. It's yours anyway, but I have to be out of the way. The Bible says he divided it to both of them. Did y'all miss that in the text? So then we start conditionalizing the prodigal. He went away. He went away. He went away. Wasting a righteous living. Put the pipe to his mouth. He was dancing. He was getting busy. You know, all that I agree. <coughs> the oldest son was still in the finals. He had what he had. He still stayed in the house even no better than the boy who was who ran away in a far country. Right. His attitude, his position never changed. Mm -hmm. The boy came back. The father made ready. Mm -hmm. Went out to his oldest, the oldest son and said, Hey, your brother is back. <laughs> listen, listen, listen to listen to the condition. This your son. Wasted your money with harvest. How do you know that? Because he probably did. He was as defined as the oldest one. God wants us to do something different. The kingdom of God is uninfluenced by time. You hear me say that all the time. What God says is true is true now. It's true when he said it. It will be true when you and I are gone. The kingdom of God is uninfluenced by time circumstances. 
And God can do two things if I say nothing else at all as I, as I got to get you out of here. God is the only one who can speed up time and suspend it all at the same time. We can't play because God, what would have been, if you don't do it now, it's going to happen even then. So you might as well do it now. God shows us that eternity is in the blink of an eye. If you're here in your position with God, and not settle. Because if, 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 you, if you can yell and scream, if, if you can get it happy like I can get happy, if you can love, if you can, if you can just you know, be really excited when you come, I love that. But if you walk out of here and you cut somebody out, your position has not changed. Can you show proof of your relationship with God based on how you have it? Your environment, All right. or is the environment too tough, and it becomes a god like the giants for a talk about those giants, the five child of the giant. See, God says that we're supposed to be king. We're supposed to take hold of the world. We're supposed to be the light of the world. And I, I hope you don't get this negative connotation. I'm just saying this is reality. Because when I walk in, wherever I walk in, I walk in singing. What do you got to sing for? Because I love Jesus. Stand on your feet. Stand on your feet. With your position. God so wants to save you. That he emptied out the bank of heaven in order to show you how much he loved you. And God gets you up every morning regardless of your condition. And God wants to love you. This is going to be controversial. I'm a controversial guy. God wants to love you into submission. Do you not know Romans is written for this idea of the sovereignty of God? And, and the Bible says, Paul says in Romans, here is the goodness of God. He's long-suffering. And he loves us. No matter what. When I'm dealing with somebody, a transgender, I'm dealing with somebody who, who, who has an alternative lifestyle, I don't have, oh, somebody left five hours up here. I don't have the, I don't have the right to just condemn them. I got to love them to submission. Because if my love and who I have in my positional relationship with Jesus ain't enough, there's nothing else I can do anyway. Oh, I, 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 I can be a paramedic. I can be a paramedic. And I can deal with conditions. I can tell what is condition. I can give me symptoms. I can, but what are we going to do to love folk? Into position. Because Christ died for us. That's what he's trying to teach us in Luke 15. There's going to be a whole lot of people begging. They don't understand. They don't know. They have no way. They're, they're, they're reaching out with hurt. They're doing all this stuff. And, 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 and then Brother Drew, they don't even know. But they see you as having something different because God put that spirit in you. And God don't want you to run. I'm not saying, I'm not saying give everybody homeless some money. <laughs> but I saw one homeless guy do something, man. And let me tell you something. I pulled out a coin and gave him something. Let me tell you what I saw downtown. Right by the court buildings. He said, I'm being real. I'm being real. I need money for weed. <laughs> I, I told you I'm out there. <laughs> so I stopped and talked. I pulled up, went in the garage because I could pay for free down there. And I walked up, said, saw him. I said, what are you doing? He said, man, look, I'm just being real. I said, you got any money? He said, no. You got a place to stay? He said, no. He said, I need this for, for, for we get <laughs> yeah. Drew, they gonna kick me out of here. You know what I did? I handed him a 20. I handed him a track. I handed him my car. He called me. We had lunch. I'm trying to get him to Jesus. Let's stop dealing with people's condition and try to figure out who will make a better member over here, a better Christian before we get him to Jesus. Let's stop throwing, throwing church attitude at folk. 
Because the church is the only way. But people have to get to Jesus to get here. Because if we do that, everybody in here's position will change. And we'll walk out of here free. We'll be carrying those babies. And we'll go in the temple like that other man in John chapter 5. He was jumping in the temple. The Pharisees saw him. I'm like, who told you to put your van up in the temple? That's illegal on the Sabbath day. He said, that man who healed me? That's what will start happening. Believe on the Lord Jesus with all your heart. This is about position. The value, your soul is so valuable that propaganda and the devil is on an all out of murder to try to tell you that it's not important. Everything we do is important to the character of our soul. Even the way we choose what we choose comes out of the depths of our soul. The person we choose to be with has something to do with some, some area in our soul that we long for that they met our criteria. He suffered, bled, and died so that we might have life. Repent of your sin. Change the way you're conditioning in your thoughts. And remember this, he didn't, came, he didn't come just to make you better. He came to make you his. All right. Not a self-help book, you can get that. Not a guru, you know, that some guys are on TV from Houston. Not a guru, this is for real. That helps you deal with your situation when you need it. Confess the sweetest name of the Lord's heart and be baptized for the remission of your sins. Give not to temptation for healing his sin. I know that he victory will have you and son of earth to win.
says in Matthew 10 32 you must confess him in other words if you're going to know the Lord you got to know him right here you can't wait until you go to heaven you got to know him right here so you want to live the life and know him right here on earth and then once you've done that you're not there yet you're still not in Christ the Bible says in Acts 2 38 
You must be baptized. Somebody says, why you got to be baptized? Why not pour? Why not sprinkle? Well, the Bible doesn't teach that. The Bible teaches that we must be completely submerged in the water. And what the water does is an operation that takes place. We get remission of sin. We receive the Holy Spirit. And we are, become a child of God. You cannot become a member of the kingdom or the church of God unless you are baptized into Christ. And once you're baptized into Christ, you come up, you wear his name because he is the establisher. He is the owner of the church. You don't wear anybody else's name but Church of Christ because the church belongs to Christ. And I'm not talking about the building. I'm talking about the teaching and the doctrine of Christ, not a man. So if you want to be saved, as the Bible says in Philippians 3, 16, let us walk by the same rule and mind the same thing. As the Bible says in Revelation 22, 18, we can't add to the word. We can't take away from the word. Like the Bible said, we are not divided. We are not a denomination because denomination means division and Christ is one. So if you, everybody wants to go to heaven, they got to do the same thing, speak the same thing, and, and walk by the same rule. And I just want you to know, it's a blessing to be a member of the Church of Christ. Romans 16, 16. The Bible says he's coming back for the church that he purchased with his own blood. The Ephesians 4 and 4 said there is one faith, one Lord, one baptism. It's all about the oneness. He died for one, and that's what he's coming back for that one church. Not the bricks and mortal. I'm talking about the teaching and the doctrine of Christ. May God bless.